Hi guys, today we're going to be updating our unit tire list for Conqueror's Blade for the season Alexander and this is up to date. So there are four types of units. There is anti-infantry units that is to kill infantry or units or pikes. There's also anti-cavalry units that are to stop cavalry but some of them also work against infantry. And then there's cavalry and finally there's ranged units. So I have included all the units that can actually do something in the game. So if you don't see any unit here, it's probably not worth uh, using it. And this is, on the left, it has the strongest units, and on the right, it has the weakest units. So first we get Lancelot Knights. The reason why they're ranked first this time is because they have they can survive against the charges if you time your one skill properly. So it's kind of useful. Next we've got uh, Zweihander, they are like uh, Lancelot Knights, but they do burst damage instead of DPS and they are completely useless against cavalry, that's why they rank below Lancelot Knights, because they cannot survive cavalry charges. However, they can defeat Lancelot Knights or in Iron Reapers and or any other form of infantry. Uh, that depends on the user skill, for example if you knock civilians down and the big difference is that Zweihanders are immune to CC when you press their burst damage skill so they can dish out lots of damage. However, this is a unit that is useless against cavalry so it's not recommended for solo play but if you play so with someone else who has pikes for example, you can coordinate to protect his pikes from other infantries. But overall Lancelot Knights are better because you can uh, use them even uh, if there's a cavalry around because they can survive with the one spell. That's it. But the Lancelot Knights do less damage than Zweihanders, meanwhile, Zweihanders survive less but do more damage than Lancelot Knights. That's why they run through second. Next, we've got Iron Reapers with the Paradox Doctrine. They can dish out uh, enough damage to be useful, and they got the mini buff where you press 2, it resets their armor uh, skill so they take less damage, so it's useful. But you need the Paradox Doctrine for them to be viable. And same thing for Zweander, you also need the Paradox Doctrine. Next you've got uh, Wu Wei. They are uh, still powerful, T4 unit. And you can also use the Paradox Doctrine on them. And the Toughness 5 Doctrine to make them viable. Because they will survive and do enough damage. So just spam 1-2, one, 1-2 two, one, two, and uh, they will do a lot of damage, but they tie uh, very easily against the phalanx or on other forms of pikes, including imperial pike guards, so you got to watch out with them, not use them alone. Next we've got mana tiles, they can actually kill the phalanx, so they're still a meta unit, and they, uh, but they also die against imperial pike guards, so you got to watch out. Basically it's a unit with a shield, it serves the same purpose as Wuwei, but it has a shield so it doesn't get one shot by pikes and can actually kill them from the front. Next we've got Mirmelon who got a recent buff, I see. I didn't test them myself, but from based on what I gathered from other people using them, they are still a viable unit, also not recommended because there's better options, but you just charge in and do some damage and that's it. Still a decent uh, unit for now. Next we've got a surprising choice, the Grey here Garrison. They got a mini buff which makes them viable, I also didn't test them myself, however I saw on a high low ranked game that these guys can actually do lots of damage and survive in prop fights, so that's why I added them here on the list of viable units. But it's not uh, recommended and ranked below the others, but if you have them you can try them out. Next we've got Onamusha, they're the worst anti-infantry unit because they die uh, from anything but if you do nice flanks or stuff like that they can still do lots of damage so it's you can still use them but it's not recommended. Next we've got the Phalanx, it's the strongest anti-cavalry unit right now. Uh, it, um, the cavalry will simply get obliterated by them so if you uh, manage to close the entrance or something no cavalry can pass. They're also useful against infantry, so they're a good unit, but you'll lose 1v1 situations against infantry, except Wu Wei and Onamusha, but if uh, Reapers, for example, charge them and swap sword and fight them, they will die. Or the Lancelot Knights. So Handers can probably kill them as well, but they need to, uh, in, to be in a blob fight. Next we've got the Modao, who is no longer the king of anti cavalry because of the Phalanx, but it's still a powerful anti cavalry and it has a 360 degree praise. So it's more useful in open terrain, whereas Phalanx is more for uh, narrow fights, 
because uh, if you get charged from behind by the phalanx if the phalanx gets charged be from behind it can still die but Madao can still survive him if he gets charged from behind next we've got Impure Bodyguard they stop uh, everything nowadays including Sunja Heavy Cavalry but you need to um, but you have a 1 minute cooldown so you cannot stop uh, multiple charges for example so uh, that's why it's only ranked third it has the strongest spell in the game, but it's a 1 minute cooldown and it doesn't work against uh, CCE main units like Iron Reapers and stuff like that, or Zoyanders. But it can still kill Wu Wei, Midnight Arm, stuff like that, so it's a very powerful unit, still. Next we got Orochi Samurai, it uh, doesn't really fit the meta nowadays, because Sunja can bait you by... I mean, you have, you have to time your skill properly, so it's a lot of effort for little gains. It's better to use the Horizon units, but you can still use Orochi Samurai as the force recommended unit. And it can also fight infantry, but it will lose against uh, anti infantry units on oh, no, 1v1 situations. Next, we got Hard Body Surgeons. They can still stop some cav, except uh, if they get overwhelmed, they will die. But uh, they can also work against inf infantry, but you need to be protected by shields or stuff like that, or in a block fight. But it's still a powerful unit that you can use if you don't have the other more powerful variants or not enough leadership. Next there is 40 Bracio Pikemen, they are still useful to stop charges from the front in the F1 formation, they can still stop uh, some uh, cavalry charges, but it's still not uh, as strong as the other variants. Next we got the blue Halberdiers, uh, they can still work the same way as Halberdier Surgeons, the purple one. But uh, it's still a tissue unit, so it's very squishy. But it does the job of uh, piking it. Next, we've got the uh, Camel Lancers, and they rank below uh, everything because nowadays most people spam uh, Phalanx uh, and Phalanx will drop arbitrary these guys. So I don't see much point to bring them uh, nowadays. But it still does the same job as previously stop scav and stuff like that. But it's very squishy against pike units and cannot uh, defeat anything except cavalry, so pure anti cavalry unit. Next for the cavalry, after the Sunja heavy cavalry nerf, we've got Yan Yudao, who are ranked first, because uh, simply they can do um, lots of damage with only one hit, so it's still good. Next we've got Sunja heavy cavalry, despite the nerf, it's still the second best cavalry, simply because you can still do the same thing as before but it's uh, gonna be stopped more easily but it gets the job done as a kill and next we've got Wayne Cousars with Max Doctrines they're gonna still be doing some damage from charges except against Phalanx and Modal or Impaired by Card Advance so it's still a good unit if you can charge from far away you will do some uh, kills yeah, assuming you don't charge in some braced units Next is the Companion Cavalry, it's very fast and uh, does the job of a uh, Lancer unit and uh, based on what I've seen other people do with them, they're uh, a meta unit nowadays, it's the best T4 unit you can get as cavalry. Next there's Dagger Axe Lancers, same old but uh, not, really doing, not really doing anything special but if you need a cavalry and you have enough leadership and only this one you can use it. Next we've got Iron Cap Scouts. They can kill heroes very quickly or weak units, so it's still a powerful unit despite the nerf. Those are red doctrines. Next, there are Kriegs Red, Kriegs Brooders. Um, they can just kill ranged units, so if you see some ranged spammers, it can still work, but the weakest cavalry of all. Not really meta, but you can still use it. Next, finally, we've got ranged units, and there's a lot of people who like to spam ranged units, but unfortunately, most ranged units are useless. These are the ones that are viable. So there's right hand marksman with the poison doctrine, it becomes the strongest uh, ranged unit in the game, because the poison does a lot of damage. Next, there's Siphonaris. Um, they're still the same old special uh, unit, but it needs to be protected by a pre made guy. So if you've got a friend you can play with, you can. As the combo phalanx and the uh, flames rowers siphonaries or model siphonaries and uh, get some kills if you set up properly next we've got imperial archers they're the only archer that's viable because they do a lot of damage to heavy armored units most people like to use vassal longbowmen but these guys are useless because they don't have a mastery 
So just use Imperial Archers if you want to play an Archer really badly. That's the only Archer that does enough damage to be useful. Next we got the Zikalian Militia, still the same old burn stuff, especially good against Phalanx, but uh, still very squishy and needs to be protected. So uh, you can also use it if you have a Primate who can protect you, but it's uh, not as powerful as it used to be, because it doesn't do enough damage on the CC bot basically. And uh, some means don't work. Some means have CC immunity, so it will not work. Next we've got Shenji, you just throw grenades and kill some weak units, that's it. Nothing special. You can just throw grenades and kill some uh, weak units, like, who don't have much HP. Still, it gets the job done, but uh, nothing special, basically. So that's it for the units, now I'm gonna show you the doctrines I use for them, and I don't have some of the units. Okay, now let me show you the doctrines I'm using. Um, Twine Reapers, you need the Paradox Doctrine. Uh, I don't uh, use it right now, but so I can show you. So for Zweihander, you need the top, top Veterancy, and these are the doctrines I use. Modal is bottom Veterancy, and these are the doctrines I'm using. Lancelot Knight's top veterancy, and these are the doctrines. Roger Samurai, I'm using this, and these are the doctrines. And it's top veterancy. Wu Wei, I'm using these doctrines. And this is the top veterancy. For Habit Surgeons, these are the doctrines, and it is using the bottom veterancy. On Amusha, you can use the mixed uh, veterancy, but I see some people also using bottom up to this probably, so that they slow enemy heroes, which can catch them off guard. But it's not really a powerful unit, so I don't recommend playing it. But you can still do something with it if you want to have fun or something in random sieges. Next minute at arms are these doctrines, and it's using the top veterancy, and you can put the last point here. Mirmilon just slap some block and damage doctrines on them or whatever. And it's using top veterancy. Next we've got Fortibratio, just put the same thing as spikes. And it's top veterancy as well. Next in Pia Pygard you just need the charge doctrine, the rest is not important. You can put uh, damage doctrines and stop veterancy. I said surgeons, these are the doctrines, but you can put something better or whatever as bottom veterancy. Next I didn't mention this unit, but you can use it as a cheap filler shield unit. These are the doctrines as bottom veterancy. Next we've got Shenji, you can put uh, this blue doctrine, then just go bottom for more grenades, cooldown. Next you can put these uh, doctrines on these uh, archers and uh, you can either go bottom or top. I need to try to test which one is better but I don't play it, so it's up to you. Next right at the marksman, you can use these doctrines or the, uh, the leadership one instead of ammo. But it's stronger with the ammo so I recommend using this uh, setup instead if you can afford it. So I just put the leadership doctrine on. Next to the Galian Militia, you can also put uh, the Paradox Doctrine on them, and these are the mixed uh, veterancy that I'm using. Next to Yanyu Dao, you can use these Doctrines, and I'm using Top Veterancy, you can also use Bottom, up to you. Next to Sonja Cavalry, you can use uh, Tolerance 5 instead of Weapon Veteran Cooldown Reduction, and I'm using uh, Bottom Veterancy. Next for SARS, you can take put these or with the, the one with a cooldown reduction. And uh, I'm using the bottom veterancy. Yeah, I mean, you can use a uh, movement speed instead of charge cooldown reduction by 6 seconds. Next, uh, Kriegs Brothers, I'm using this. It's uh, not really a meta unit in Siege, but uh, you can still kill ranged units as it, so if you see some ranged spammers in your games, you can use it. 
and so very the strongest uh, PVE unit from bandits. Next we got uh, Tiger Axe Lancers, you can go top veteran C and these are the doctrines I'm using. You can also put uh, charge glue down 6 uh, seconds instead of movement speed 9%. Next Camel Lancers, I mean, you can put whatever and go bottom veteran C or top as you prefer for more brace damage. Also not recommended, it's purely to counter cavalry charges, that's it. Next companion cavalry, I think you go bottom, I don't have it yet. As for the doctrines, you can put uh, what uh, you want, I guess. That's just a special cavalry, okay. Next we've got Iron Cap Scoutsman, you can put the same thing I put on Kriegs Brothers on it and uh, the veteran C is top this is a good unit that's fast and you can kill some heroes with it or some cheap units or flank from behind so that's it for the unit meta tile list I've been playing ranked uh, on the Asia server and this is my conclusion as for the pikemen like uh, Phalanx, you can put uh, typical pike doctrines with damage on it, like this for example could work. So thanks for watching, if this video is helpful to you feel free to share with it your friends or new players and let me know in the comments what else you want me to cover about Conqueror's Blade.